Hello everyone, my name is Taylor Hodgson Scott and I'm an animator. Today I'm going to show you how to constrain an object in Maya 2011 in such a way that it can be animated, attached, and detached to one object. This requires some understanding of how to navigate the Maya interface, but is otherwise straightforward. The method I'm going to demonstrate will be treating the object, or the box in this case, as what will be animated to drive the other objects, the character's hands, when I move into animation. That said, let's dive in. And don't be afraid to pause the video and follow along. I've already made the scene with my character in box. My character's hands are sent to inverse kinematics, or IK. First, I need to create a locator and match it to the position of one of the hands. I'm holding V on the keyboard to activate snapping and moving the locator to the hand node to make it snap into position. In constraining objects, as opposed to parenting objects, we need to select the parent or driver and then the child or driven. Thus, select the locator, then the hand node, and go up to your menu bar. Make sure that you're in the animation menu set and go to the constrain drop-down menu. Go to parent and click on the options box to the right of it. Check the box next to rotate and translate all. Make sure that the weight is exactly one and click add. The hand now follows the locator when this channel, locator 1w0, is one and doesn't when it's set to zero. Additionally, all the constrained channels have turned blue. However, the hand starts to act differently after we key it. I'm going to set a keyframe at 1 for all translation and rotation values to basically activate the constraint. As a result, the channels turn green to represent the different inputs it is receiving, one set from its own x, y, and z values, and another set from the locators. The weight of this constraint is blended on or off by the blend parent 1 attribute that appears after we add the key, but in order for the constraint from the hand to the locator to be applied properly, the blend parent 1 and the locator 1w0 both have to be turned to 1, and vice versa for this constraint to be completely deactivated. To simplify the animation process, we connect blend parent 1 to control locator 1w0, so only the blend parent needs to be tampered with for our constraint. To do this, you'll want to open up both the connection editor window and the outliner window. Select the hand and, in the connection editor, click on reload left. Next, ensure that the hand is still selected and go to your outliner window. You'll need to follow the highlighted groups all the way to where the hand node is in your outliner. Find the constraint with an exclamation point icon with the hand name underscore parent constraint 1. Select this and reload the inputs on the right side of the connection editor. Next, find blend parent 1 in the outputs and locator 1w0 under the inputs. Select the blend parent 1, then locator 1w0. If successful, the locator 1w0 under the hand node's shapes in the channel box will now have turned yellow. This tells us that the value from the blend parent output is controlling this extra channel, which can't be seen in the graph editor, and makes our lives as animators a lot easier. Now that the hand can follow the locator wherever it goes, we need to parent the locator to the box as it allows freedom of animating the locator underneath the box in hierarchy without having to directly constrain it. This is useful if you want to shift the weight of the box around in the character's hands, or even just want to change the positioning of your animation with ease. To parent the locator to the box, select the child, or locator, then select the parent, the box, and go to Edit, Parent. Just keep the pecking order in mind. The box is driving the locator, and the locator is driving the hand. If you had a smaller object and wanted the hand to be the driving force, it would be as simple as constraining the box to the locator and parenting the locator to the hand. Another benefit of this method is that it can smoothly switch between detached and constrained. Since the values from the locator are directly fed into the hand, you can either key the hand directly when it's still constrained or about to be constrained into the object, or you can simply key blend parent 1 so that it transitions smoothly from one position to another without having to match it by eye. I've found this method of constraining objects to be optimal for simple scenes, but for moving into a more complex set with more than one object you need to constrain a hand to, the best way to learn is by experimenting further with the tools you've learned. Happy animating!